خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبي محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونزلنا عليك الكتابة بيانا لكل شيء وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمسلمين صدق الله العظيم we begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers, and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> Our topic is entitled Ashura in the Quran. This is a night when many very important things occur. The one that is closest to us in time is the Shahadat of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. But before him there were other important events that occurred on this night. If you would like me to speak on the Shahada Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala, we can have a second lecture. You just have to wait. We can have a second lecture after the Lakul Isha. But we have to give <coughs> priority to the Quran over everything. The Quran comes even before Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And so tonight's lecture is not on all the important events of the world, not on the Shahada of Sayyidina Hussain radiallahu ta'ala which we can discuss inshallah later. But tonight's lecture is on the most important, most important subject of all, Ashura in the Quran. I grew up never knowing that the Qur'an had anything to do with Ashura. Never. Every night of Ashura, for years and years and years and years and years, the elders will speak to me only about the Shahada of Sayyidina Muhammad radiallahu ta'ala. So I never knew that there was any connection between Ashura and the Qur'an. Imagine my surprise when I find that Ashura is in the Quran. And that is the first place we should go to when commemorating the day of Ashura. Only after we have done that, only then can we go to say the name of Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. Where is Ashura in the Quran? There was no Ashura <coughs> while we were in Mecca, <coughs> even though the Quran was being revealed for 13 years. It is only after we made the Hijra to Medina, <coughs> then we found a large community of Jews in Medina. <coughs> And Nabi Muhammad والسلام, found them keeping fast Saum on the day of Ashura. So he asked them, Why are you fasting on this day? Had we been fasting in Makkah on the day of Ashura, there would be no need to ask. And they replied and they said, We are fasting on this day. Because this day is the anniversary of that day. That day which is in the Quran. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Musa alayhi salam to take his staff and strike the water. 
and when he struck the water then the Quran described what happened in Surah Al-Baqarah بَعَدَ أُوْهُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَإِذْ فَرَقْنَا بِكُمُ الْبَحْرِ and we parted the sea for you there's water a wall, a mountain of water on this side and a mountain of water on that side and in between there is dry land وَإِذْ فَرَقْنَا بِكُمُ الْبَحْرِ فَأَنْجَيْنَاكُمْ and we delivered you to safety we expedited you to safety وَأَغْرَقْنَا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْزُرُونَ and we destroyed Pharaoh and his army they were all drowned and it happened before your very eyes وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْزُرُونَ so this day is the anniversary of that day and that is why we fast on this day and so Ashura is in the Quran and Ashura is that day of Allah when this miracle occurred and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded in the Quran وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَامِ اللَّهِ Remind them Recall for them Tell them the story Time and again Of what happened وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَامِ اللَّهِ About those days of Allah And this is one of the most important days The day of our Shura and so tonight we ask what happened on that day of Ashura what is the story of Ashura that Allah wants us He commands us to recall to remind the people about it as we are doing tonight something happened that night, that day when the waters came down on Piran and his army as Pharaoh was drowning the veils are removed from off the eyes now you can see and Pharaoh realized that he wasn't God remember he was saying أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى I am your Lord, most high but now that he is drowning he realizes, no he is not God and he further realizes that the God of Musa alayhi salam the God of Banu Israel that is the real God so God He's not a white man <laughs> that you see Christmas time, white fella. No, he's not a black man. No, he's not a woman. <laughs> a goddess after whom they have named the day Friday. You know, Friday is the day of pride. And pride is a Scandinavian goddess. You know that, of course. So every time we use the word Friday, we become a church. You know that, of course. Yes, <laughs> so may Allah forgive us that shit. <coughs> the God of Musa and the God of Banu Israel, that's the real God. A God you cannot see. An unseen God. So Fir'aun declares his faith in God, in Allah, as he was drowning. Nobody knew that. For thousands of years, nobody knew that. Until the Quran came down thousands of years later. And Allah told us what happened underneath the water. So when He said, I now have faith in Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded. The ayah is in Surah Yunus. 
الآن ناو ناو فيرو الآن وقد عصيت قبل and before this you were in a state of rebellion rejection obstinate rejection of the truth وقد من المفسدين and you were you are committing acts of wickedness and oppression on the earth now there فاليوم ننجيك ببدنك this day we have decided to preserve your physical body badan badan physical body this day we have decided to preserve your physical body litakuna liman khalfaka aya i'm translating for you word for word litakuna that you will be meaning your body when it is rediscovered liman khalfaka aya your body will be a sign for a people to come after you wa inna kathira min an-nas an ayatina la ghafilun ma most people they don't have time to worry about this something about the ayat of allah they're too busy making a living driving motor car up and down they have so many other things to do and they are negligent about the signs of allah now who are these people for whom allah has preserved the body of quran that this body of quran will be a sign for them who are these people to come out there are in the quran two kinds of verses ah yes in surah ali imran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that there are ayat in the Quran which are muhkamat plain, clear, the foundation of the book on the ummul kitab these ayat which are muhkamat they are the very foundation of the book but then he says there are other ayat which are mutashabihat and those mutashabihat are ayat which are not Plain. We may use the word coding, mm-hmm. so you have to penetrate the code. How can you penetrate the code? Allah knows the meaning. And in addition, in addition to Allah, Rasikuna fil Ilm, they also know the meaning. What's Rasikuna fil Ilm? Rasikuna fil Ilm means the most learned of all. You have to be the most learned of all. That category to be able to understand certain ayat of the Quran. Rasikuna fil Ilm. And in Surah Al-Kahf, remember, When Musa alayhi salam said I am the most learned of all men you tired him me talking about that now Allah says no you're not there's one more learned than you are he says I want to meet him and what does surah al-kahf say where would you meet him keep down you know it by heart now <laughs> you'll meet him at majma'ul bahrain and don't take me up top of table mountain eh? and show me Majma' al-Bahrain <laughs> Majma' al-Bahrain the place where the two oceans meet there you'll find the most learned of all men and uh, Imam Baydar rahimahullah is the only commentator of the Quran who recognizes as religious symbolism 
And he says that the two oceans, and I agree with him, you don't have to agree with him, no. You don't have to agree with him. I agree with him. He says that the two oceans are not Atlantic and Pacific. No. He said the two oceans are the oceans of knowledge externally acquired and the ocean of knowledge that comes directly from Allah internally acquired. Hmm? And so the Rasikhun of Ilm in the last age the age when the body of Fir'aun will be rediscovered the Rasikhun of Ilm will be these people the ones who combine the two oceans of knowledge the ocean of knowledge externally acquired and the ocean of knowledge internally acquired and these people are able to understand the mutashabihat because they use a particular methodology not only do they receive knowledge directly from Allah but in addition to that they use a methodology they say we believe in the Quran everything كل من عند ربنا the whole of the Quran is from our Rabb and therefore if you want to understand a particular path which is coded we have to grasp the whole message so if you want to answer the question who are those people for whom Allah is preserving the body of Fir'aun <coughs> that the body of Fir'aun will be a sign for them it is to the Qur'an we must go to ask that question and the Qur'an will answer it a people who live the way that Pharaoh lived and a people who will die the way Pharaoh died who are they? when Fir'aun gave the declaration of faith underneath the water was it accepted? did he die as a Muslim? That's the question. No, says the Quran. Fir'aun died as a kafir. And Fir'aun is going into the hellfire. Even though he made the declaration of faith. Well, he made it too late. <coughs> too late. Once the staff hit the water, that was it. Too late now. <coughs> So there are a people who are coming later and for them history will repeat itself and the body of Fir'aun is being preserved as a sign for them that when the staff hits the water for them maybe it is not the staff hitting the water maybe it's something else but once that happens <laughs> then they also will declare faith as Pharaoh did but it will be too late it won't be accepted and they will die like that and go into the hellfire who are they? was the body of Pharaoh discovered? thousands of years afterward was it discovered? yes yeah. I was a student in Al-Azhar University in 1963. I spent only one year. I'm not a graduate of Al-Azhar. But I went to Cairo in 1963 when I was 21 years of age. And spent one year. And during that time I went to the Cairo Museum several times. And in the Cairo Museum there is the body of that Pharaoh who died. Yes, it's there. You can see it and the body of Pharaoh was discovered in 1897 about 110 years ago hmm. since the body was discovered it means a life thinking about a people who are alive in the world now now <laughs> that there are a people in the world today for whom that body is a sign who are they? 
The answer is in the Quran. In Surah Al-Nisa, in Surah Al-Nisa, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala described how they declared of Maryam alayhi salam wa bi kufrihim wa qawlihim ala Maryam buhtanan azima that she had committed sin she is no longer a virgin she has committed zina and therefore that her son Nabi Isa alayhi salam was a bastard wa na'udhu billah min hafa hmm? and then the next verse wa qawlihim inna qatalna al-masiha isa ibn mariam rasul Allah this is called sarcasm in English hmm? we've killed him we've killed him because they saw him on the cross they saw him die give up the ghost we killed him the Messiah this is sarcasm the messenger of Allah the son of Mary we killed him but then Allah goes on to say وَمَا قَتَلُهُ they did not kill him وَمَا صَلَبُهُ they did not crucify him what I can should be Allah made it appear like that and then elsewhere Allah says وَلَكِتْ بَلْ رَفَعُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah raised him unto himself what does the next ayah say? he says listen carefully وَإِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا I'm going to speak slowly now وَإِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا None of them will escape all of them, the Ahlul Kitab who are there at the time when Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns what does it mean Nabi Isa? they will have to believe in him la yu'minanna bihi they will have to believe in him qabla mawti before Nabi Isa alayhi salam can die and here death means mawti and what is mouth? You know what is mouth now. Mouth is when Allah takes the soul and does not return it. That is mouth. If Allah takes the soul and returns it, that is not mouth. <coughs> when He takes the soul and does not return it, then that is mouth. So Nabi Isa al Islam has not as yet tasted mouth, has he? And the Quran declares, Kullu nafsin zaikatul mouth. Every soul, including the son of Mary, must taste mouth. Including Imam Dawood, including Imam Imran, all of us must taste mouth. Hmm? And he has not as yet tasted mouth. So he has to return to taste mouth. When he comes back, and before he tastes mouth, before he died every one of them the Ahlul Kitab who were there at that time will have to believe in him the Jews who rejected him as Al-Masih the Messiah who said he's a bastard the Jews will have to accept him as the Messiah and the Christians who say Yes, he is the Messiah, but we don't want to use that word Messiah too much. So let's switch to Greek. Let's call him Christ instead of Messiah. Because the word Messiah is we are uncomfortable with. We prefer the word Greek. Nobody knows the meaning of Greek word. So we call him Christ, Jesus Christ. That's why. But he is the Son of God. Because 
somebody came to them and whispered, Oh, he was born without a father. Yes, of course he was born without a father. We believe that. Well, you know who was his father? Because he was born without a father. He was the father. Oh, we didn't know that. Oh, he is the father. Yes. And if he is the father, then he is the son. Oh my gosh, we didn't know that. So he is the son of God. Yes. And if the father is God, the son must be God too. So you have to worship him. Oh, we didn't know that. So they were taken for a ride. Yes. <laughs> and they started to believe in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And they started to worship Nabi Isa al Islam as God. And Allah says in the Quran, have you no sense? He used to eat food. That's all he has to, that's all he needs to say. He used to eat food. Anyone who eats food has to go to the toilet. So your God has gone to the toilet and can't meet you now. <laughs> Every single one of them will have to believe in him when he comes back. And so not only will the Jew have to believe in him that he is the Messiah, but the Christian will have to believe in him. Exactly what Nabi Muhammad said. That he is a prophet of Allah, he's Nabi, he's Rasul. But he's not the son of God. And there is no trinity. And you should not worship him, but worship the God whom he worships. So I went in a synagogue. Once upon a time I used to be invited in the synagogue in New York by the Jews. They were checking out my profile at that time. So I gave a lecture in the synagogue, about two, three hundred Jews were there, a number of rabbis. And when I said this, that when Jesus alayhi salam comes back, as he is coming back, you will have to believe in him as the Messiah. When the lecture was over, they surrounded me. All around, they surrounded me. I was in the center. And the question was, they were demanding why. Why must we be forced to do what we do not want to do? So what answer could I give? On that day, the veils will be removed of your eyes. And on that day, you'll be able to see in such a way that you cannot deny Hmm? The Quran goes on. Wa in min ahlil kitab illa la yu'minan nabihi qabla mawti. And then he goes on to say, after you have made your declaration of faith, when Nabi Isa al-Islam returns as the Messiah, and you now believe in him, wa yawmul qiyamati yakunu alayhim shahidah. Despite that declaration of faith, it will not be accepted. As the declaration of Pharaoh was not accepted. And on the day of judgment, he'll give evidence against you and you go into the hellfire. And so now we can answer the question. What was the question? This day, we have decided to preserve your physical body, Pharaoh. That this body of yours, when it is rediscovered in history, thousands of years from now, would be a sign for a people to come after you. Hmm? Who are those people? Now we know who they are. <coughs> they would be the Ahlul Kitab. Which Ahlul Kitab? They would be the Jews who rejected Nabi Isa alayhi salam as al Masih, And they would be the Christians who believed in Nabi Isa alayhi salam as the Messiah, but also believed that he was a 
He was the son of God and the third person of a trinity. These people will now be forced when they see him, when he comes back, with his hand resting on the wings of two angels when he comes back to the world. And Imam al-Mahdi is standing there and he declares, here he is, this is the son of Mary. At that time, this history will reoccur. History will repeat itself. At that time it was the rock, it was the rock striking the water. Now it's too late. At this time it is Nabi Isa Islam coming down. Now it's too late. If you had not declared faith before, now it is too late. The rest of our lecture is interesting. Before the final moment arrives, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks Musa alayhi take your rod and strike the water. Before that occurred, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused a number of his signs to unfold in Egypt. How many were there? Can someone help me? How many were there? Huh? Seven. How many? Twelve. How many? Somebody said seven, somebody said twelve. How many signs were there? Hmm? The Quran answers the question. The Quran says that there were nine. Nine. I was afraid I might not be able to remember the nine, so I wrote them down. I wrote them down. The first one. And you will see in a moment. At that time it was nine, at this time it is nine. At that time it was nine, at this time it is nine. <laughs> yes? Number one. When Musa Islam was there in the desert, it was almost dark. The place was cold and he had his wife and children with him and they were lost. And then he saw a fire in a distance. So he told his wife and just stay here, let me go. Maybe over there by the fire I could get some directions. Or at least I could bring back a burning branch so we could make a fire get some warm. When he reached to the fire there was nobody there. If it was you or I, we get scared, we run away. A fire in the desert and nobody there? I'll be scared. Would you? And then a voice spoke, but nobody there. Now you, you get even more scared. In me and Allah. Allah is speaking. It is me, I am Allah. La ilaha illallah. There is no God beside me. Take off your shoes, Musa. He took it off quickly. Where he could be? <laughs> <laughs> and then Allah spoke to him. That's why he's known as Kalimullah, the one whom Allah speaks. That I'm giving you a mission, Musa. This is your mission. Quran. He has exceeded all the limits as they are now exceeding in the Holy Land. He has exceeded all the limits of oppression, wickedness evil conduct against the servants of Allah. So go give him a warning for me. Tell him. Stop this oppression of yours, this wickedness of yours, and release my people. So Musa said, I need some help. Would you allow my brother to go with me? Harun and Isa. Yes, Harun can go. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the first sign that you give to Egypt and to Firaun. What is that in your hand, Musa? Alayhi salam. Oh, this is my staff. I use it 
with the sheep and other things. Musa throw it on the ground. Now when you teach these children, when you teach the story to children, make sure you have a rod in your hand, okay? Make sure you have a rod in your hand. Make sure it is night time. Get a lantern. Get a bottle with some kerosene, light it. Make a flambeau, a light, okay? And, and then you have the children around the fire. Hmm? And then you throw the rod on the ground. And from the time you throw, you throw the rod, he must jump back quickly. Jump back quickly. Hmm? Something is happening. The rod became a snake. Okay? Moshe, hold on to it. <coughs> so now you're going to try to hold the rod, the staff, but you must show fright. You're afraid to go hold it. No. So the children are watching you. And the children are learning. They're reliving the story. Hmm? And then when he held on, to the snake, it became a rod once again. That's sign number one. And then, Musa, alayhi salam, put your hand underneath your arm. <coughs> now take it out. And when you took it out, it was gleaming with light. <coughs> White light. But nothing wrong with his hand. <coughs> now go. <coughs> so Musa Islam went and delivered the signs as we must also deliver the signs did you hear that? did you hear that? Musa Islam went and delivered the signs at that time and these are the first two and there were seven more as we also will have nine this time and we also must call the attention of people to these nine signs we'll come to that in a moment but when, uh, when Musa and uh, delivered the signs they did not bother with him now so then Allah instructed Musa Islam and the other signs came one after the other there was frogs. Hmm? You sit down to eat your acne, son. Acne? Hmm? And you sit down to eat your acne, a frog jumps into the pool. Eh? You go in the bathroom, you have a bucket of water, you want to take a whistle, and as you dip, a frog is in the water. Eh? And then, you lie down on the bed with your wife at night time to sleep and between you and your wife is a problem. Huh? So this was sign number three. And then there was light. Light. Hmm? In your hair. Everybody, light. All over the place, light. And then there was locusts. And you know what the locusts do? They destroy all the crops. Hmm? And then there was drought, no rain. So as a result of the combination of drought, no rain and locusts, you now have short crops, shortage of food. And then you have Tufan. No, that's not an easy one. Tufan. Even the scholars of Arabic <laughs> have difficulty with Tufan. Some say Tufan was showers that became floods or powerful wind like a hurricane whatever it was it was a sign and then finally that the water of the river Nile became blood either the water of the river Nile became blood or water became blood so these are nine signs and every time, every time Allah will unleash a sign or unfold a sign to them and the Egyptians would be in a state of torment 
difficulties, with lights all over the place. And then they will say to Musa, alayhi salam, pray to your God, ask him to take this plague away. And we will allow Banu Israel to go. So Musa alayhi salam will pray to Allah, he'll take away the lights. And then Fir'aun and the Egyptians will say, no, we're not releasing them. Hmm? So the nine signs unfolded but did not impact upon Fir'aun and the Egyptian people who supported him. When all nine signs had unfolded, only then did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala act. And what did he do? Where is it? وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى وَأَخِيهِ أَنْ تَبَوَّأَ لِقَوْمِكُمَا بِمِسْرَى بُيُوتًا Why is he reciting word by word? We are not accustomed to that. وَجَعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ كِبْلَى وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَبَشِّرْ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ This is not an easy ayah. When Allah was ready for the What will he call it? The countdown. Ah, that's the word. <laughs> the countdown to this rod hitting the water. The countdown now begins. What does he do? For the countdown to begin, something important had to happen to the people who are the servants of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he then revealed or inspired or instructed Musa alayhi salam and his servant Harun, I mean his brother Harun alayhi salam to establish residence in Mitra to establish residence, Buyuta, the Mitra they were scattered all over Egypt. Fir'aun had them walking as slaves to build the pyramids, to build the statues of Pharaoh, to build massive construction projects. That's why he didn't want to release Banu Israel, to lose all his slaves. So they were scattered all over Egypt. As we are scattered today. But the servants of Allah, at that time when the countdown begins, will have to leave wherever they are and come to one area. I wish I could repeat this a hundred thousand times. They have to leave wherever they were in Egypt and come to one place. A place called Misr. And Misr is not the whole of Egypt. Today Misr means the whole of Egypt. But at that time Misr is the area between the, the river Nile and the Red Sea. It's called the Eastern Delta. Where when the river Nile overflows its, its bank, then this area will become flooded. So this area is very for a time. This is Misr in the Quran, not the whole of Egypt. So establish your buyut, your residence, in this area. Wajalu buyutakum kibla. Now that is difficult. Wajalu buyutakum kibla. Kibla 
is the direction to which we turn in Salat. No, that is Qibla to Salat. <laughs> Qibla to Salat will be Qibla for Salat. But this is not Qibla for Salat. This is Qibla to which you must, you must travel from wherever you are scattered all over in Egypt. Not Qibla of Salat, but Qibla to which you must travel. So Musa, you and your brother, come on, establish your residence in Mithil, which would be between the River Nile and the Red Sea. And then let all of Banu Israel leave wherever they are and come quietly, eh? quietly, one by two, the way we made Hijrah, in small groups by night time and so on. Stealth, and come and join you here in this area. Why? Because as soon as you all assemble over here, we'll be ready. After all of Banu Israel had assembled over here, where Musa Islam and Harun Islam had established their muyut, their residence, then at night time, Allah gave the word, Move! Head for the feet! And by the time <laughs> Fir'aun got to know, because Fir'aun and his government, eh, they have their spies and they are watching and seeing what's happening. But during the night time he moved, so by the time they got the news, we already gone far. So when Fir'aun and his army came rushing now, we've almost reached the water by morning time. And of course Allah Ta'ala is helping us and the angels with us and stuff. And when we reach the water, you could see Pharaoh's army coming in the distance, maybe a mile, two miles away. Hmm? So we're between the devil and the deep blue sea. Huh? So many of us must have lost hope. Many of us must be in a state of disappear. This prophet has led us to disaster. That, no, not the people who have faith in Allah. That's a difference with faith. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa later on, no, you strike with the water, with your rod. And you know what happened after that. And so now we are living in that age where history is repeating itself. And so this night of Ashura and the story of Ashura in the Quran, is of the greatest possible importance to understand what is now happening and what is coming up. At that time there were nine signs. Nine. I'm not going to ask you to repeat it because I don't think you remember. You remember the frogs. <laughs> you might remember the light. And this time there were also nine. Where the nine? That was nine, this is nine. Before the rod struck the water, there were nine. Before Nabi Isa Islam returned, there are nine. What are the nine? Nabi Muhammad Islam came upon us, we were sitting talking, and he asked, what are you talking about? We said, we're talking about the signs of the last day. He said the last day would not come until he mentioned, until, and he mentioned, ten. Of which the return of Nabi Isa is one. So take that out, nine remaining. What are the nine? Make sure you memorize it. Number one, Dajjal, the false messiah, the antichrist. Number two, Gog and Magog. Yeah, a Jews and Jews. Number three, Duhan, smoke. Number four, the battle of a beast of the earth, but of means land. And it can mean here Abdul Muqaddasa, holy land. Number five, that the sun would rise 
from the West. Number six, seven, and eight, three Khusu, plural of Khas, an earthquake in which this, the earth sinks down and swallows what it swallows. One in the east, that's number six. One in the west, that's number seven. And one in Arabia, that's number eight. And the one in Arabia, I have told you, would confirm that this is Imam al Mahdi. Hmm? And then number nine, that the fire will come out of Yemen and drive people to their place of assembly, which is Arafat. So there you are. History repeats itself. That was nine. And this is now. The body of Fir'aun was discovered in 1897, I think. And in that same year, the Zionist movement was established in Europe, in Basel and Switzerland, I think. And so when the Zionist movement was established, we know. Because the body of Fir'aun has been discovered in the same year, that the countdown has started and events are now going to unfold as they unfolded at that time with Fir'aun and Musa Islam. that those who hold on to the truth will be small in number and they won't have any missiles and tanks and machine guns they would be weak and they'd be small in number. And those who rule over the world would be powerful, jabbar. And they would be people who will be well armed. They will have power. And they will use their power to oppress. As he used his power to oppress. <coughs> And in the same way that he said, Ana Rabbukumul A'la, you must worship me, I am the Lord. They will do the same thing. That we are the ones who say, Allah is no longer Al Malik, sovereign, the state is now sovereign. Hmm? That is it. Allah's authority is no longer supreme, we don't recognize that. The authority of the state is now supreme. That is it. Allah's law is no longer the highest law, we don't recognize that. The law of the state is now the highest law. That is it. Allah can make something haram, we can make it halal. That is it. So in the same way, that Pharaoh declared, I am your Lord Most High, so too in this age, those who rule over the world will be playing God. At the end of the nine times, only then would Nabi Isa Islam return. And when he returns at that time, history will again repeat itself. That they will all have to declare their faith in him and then they'll die and he'll give evidence against them and they'll go into the hellfire what do we do when we have now understood the Quran that we never understood before now what do we do when we are living in that time when the body of Fir'aun has been discovered the first thing you do is to go back to the Qur'an and study everything that the Qur'an has to say on the subject of Fir'aun and Musa It is not by accident that Nabi Musa salam commands more space in the Qur'an than any other prophet. Why? Because the epic encounter between Musa salam and Fir'aun is this time to be reenacted in history and we are now living at that moment in time when it's being reenacted. 
In the same way, you must not only study the subject of Musa and, and Fir'aun in the Quran, but now seek to monitor the signs. Nan, I wonder how many have gone already. Because the body has been discovered. At the end of the nine, Isa Islam will return. If I can study the subject of the nine, and if I can identify some of them, then I will know how much time remains before this epic encounter is repeated to conclusion. One last word. Out of these nine, one of them is the sun would rise from the west. But the Quran declares that the sun rises from the east. And the Quran declares that Tabdila li khalqillah Allah's creation does not change. And therefore, if the sun were to ever rise from the west, the Quran would be wrong. So you can come to me with all kinds of theories to convince me that one day the sun would rise from the west. But my response to you would be that if the sun were to rise from the west, the Quran would be wrong. And the Quran cannot be wrong. The Quran says that the sun rises from the east. And the Quran says that Allah's law, Allah's creation does not change. La tabdila li khalqillah. And therefore, I have recognized the sun rising from the west to be religious symbolism and therefore mutashabihat and it has to be interpreted. If I were to interpret it and give an explanation for it, you don't have to accept it, no. Anyone who interprets is not binding on anyone. You can accept it, you can reject it. And secondly, when I interpret the sun rising from the west, I have to make sure that I say, oh, the Allah does not make mistakes, because I can be mistaken. Having said that, I must make an effort to try to understand the sign, to try to interpret it. I must make an effort. Don't just have your dinner. Go home and go to sleep. No. You have your dinner, you go home, you go to sleep. Of what use are such Muslims? But that you should strive and struggle. And you should go down on your musalla and pray and beg with tears coming from your eyes. Oh Allah Ta'ala, show me. I want to understand. Hmm? To understand this religious symbolism. That will bring blessings. Even if you make a mistake, as I have made in the past, even if you make a mistake, you will still get blessings for the effort that you are making. But you have to understand that it is not only nur from Allah that you need. You need to go to the place where the two oceans meet, not on the top of Table Mountain. You have to acquire two oceans of knowledge. And the two oceans of knowledge have to be harmoniously integrated. And you will not be able to do that unless you use the methodology in Surah to Ali Imran. 
The whole of the Quran is from my Rav. So you have to understand the totality of the message. And that is an effort that will take you a lifetime. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase our knowledge of this subject and that we may be rightly guided. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا رب العالمين